Hello everyone, my name is Eric Jones. Welcome to uh, your first lecture in a series uh, over your uh, summer courses. Uh, this lecture is entitled Pesticide Applicator Certification and Licensing. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about um, the licensing process, the certification process for both private and commercial applicators. So this lecture comes from Chapter 1 in your North Carolina Pesticide Applicator Certification Core Manual. So if you have that textbook, you should already have your books. If you're studying to become a licensed uh, pesticide applicator, you should have already purchased your books. Uh, so let's go ahead and open up your core manual to chapter one. And the first thing we're going to talk about is our objectives. And our first objective is we're going to discuss the differences between a general use pesticide and a restricted use pesticide. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. We're going to talk uh, about the differences between a private and a commercial pesticide applicator. We're going to discuss the differences in certification and recertification of a private applicator. And in addition to certification and recertification of a commercial applicator, we also are going to discuss licensing uh, as a commercial applicator. So you can already see uh, the main difference between private and commercial is the license. Both. Uh, must become certified, but only the commercial applicator needs to, uh, to get the license. And then last but not least, we will talk about the categories uh, of a commercial applicator. And so, what is a general use pesticide? And guys, really, a general use pesticide can be purchased by anyone. This can be anyone right off the street, going into the big box stores, going back to the home and garden section and buying either a, uh, a broadleaf weed control for their lawns, ones that they can hook up to their garden hose and actually spray on their turf, uh, or any type of fungicide that they may use on their roses or an insecticide that, that needs to, uh, uh, to be uh, applied to their garden. So anyone can walk in. You do not have to have a license and these are going to be purchased um, like I said at a, at a retail uh, garden center or one of the big box stores. Um, your restricted use pesticides, they can harm the environment. They can harm the applicator. If you're seeing lawn care technicians out there um, you know wearing a respirator, wearing goggles, wearing rubber boots, um, you know these are your chemicals that that the average homeowner cannot go and purchase on their own. So um, it needs to be applied by a certified applicator or needs to be supervised by a private applicator. And what that means is really uh, a lawn care company can have, uh, let's say the office manager or the, uh, the branch manager can be certified and licensed uh, and then have all their employees work underneath them. So um, greater risk to the environment, greater risk to the applicator, uh, greater risk to your clients. So this is why uh, when, when applying restricted use pesticides, um, you have to have the certification. Now, not all chemicals that lawn care companies use are restricted use pesticides. They, uh, they may be eligible for, uh, for, for homeowners. And let's take Roundup, for instance. I mean, anybody can go to the big box store and buy Roundup, and me, being a licensed landscape contractor and licensed commercial applicator, we spray Roundup all the time. We're spraying Roundup in our shrub beds, you know, on the sidewalks and people's driveways, you know, the grass and weeds that come up through that. So we're, we're spraying Roundup all the time, and that's not a restricted use pesticide. So, um, you know, a lot of lawn care companies are going to be applying uh, other chemicals that aren't restricted use. But a lot of the times uh, they may have to purchase and apply a restricted use pesticide and that's when it requires um, uh, the certification or at least be supervised. Someone in your direct chain of command uh, is, is certified. So big difference there. Uh, testing and training. Guys, there's two laws that we are going to fall under when it comes to uh, being licensed and certified and one is the North Carolina pesticide law of 1971 and then also the North Carolina structural pest control law of 1955. Both of these licensing or uh, license laws require um, anyone to be licensed that one applies pesticides for compensation uh, is a public operator. Now public operator um, could be someone that's spraying underneath power lines. You know, maybe Duke Energy has hired them to uh, to spray and maintain the vegetation underneath their uh, their power lines. Um, these these operators are going to have to have a license. Now, there is also 
what they call a public operator that may be someone who works for a grounds maintenance crew uh, for the community college here. So, you know, any of those guys that are out spraying weeds, they're going to be more than likely uh, certified, at least uh, their boss is certified, but they don't necessarily have to pay for the license. All they do is submit uh, a signed uh, license form and they don't have to submit that $75 fee. But anyone that's out there doing it commercially and charging people uh, to apply these pesticides are going to, uh, to have to have the license. So also golf course operators uh, are going to, uh, to be required to, uh, to have a law, uh, license and then pest control consultants and dealers. And basically what we just talked about right here are some of the categories, and we'll talk a little bit more at the end, but a, a pest control consultant, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is someone who only sells advice uh, to people. They may call a pest control consultant, it could be a homeowner, hey, I've got this issue in my turf grass, I've got this issue uh, with some plants, you know, what do I need to do? Only the pesticide consultant, um, they can only uh, give advice or make a recommendation on which pesticide to use. Now, once they actually apply a pesticide, they're going to have to have a grounds applicator license as well, in addition uh, to their uh, pesticide consultant license. And then dealers, dealers are the ones who sell the restricted use pesticides. So these, these are going to be your um, Places where your landscape contractors go, you know, your supply houses, you know, they're, they're going to sell seed, fertilize, you know, some of them actually sell plants and, you know, different tools and stuff. So, um, you know, site one supply, uh, you know, it used to be Lesco, um, you know, our neighbors at Green Resource just down the road. So, you know, these guys are going to have the, uh, the pesticide dealer license. Now, um, there are three different types of applicators. We're only going to discuss two. We're only going to discuss the private and the commercial applicators. Yes, chapter one does talk about the uh, structural uh, applicators, but we're not going to get into that because for this course and for this class and, and these lecture series this summer, we're only going to focus on getting our private uh, or commercial certification. And um, because this, guys, is a class that as soon as you finish, um, you're eligible to sit and take the uh, North Carolina state exam. And once you pass the state exam, you're able to, to start working. You're able to start generating income, uh, you know, for yourself and for your family. So one of my favorite courses to teach, one of my, uh, uh, one of my passions is pesticides and the safe use of pesticides. You know, a lot of people are going to say, well, you know, we, we shouldn't be spraying anything. We shouldn't be... Uh, allowed to spray pesticides. I 100% totally disagree with that. I'm all for it. Um, you know, guys, we couldn't feed the world if it weren't for pesticides. I mean, bottom line. But, you know, we're not going to go down that road. What we're going to focus on is how to get your um, pesticide certification uh, and license. And so in chapter one, if you wanted to study up a little bit on the structural pest control, that's fine. There may or may not be a um, homework question or test question on it. Um, when you go and sit for your pesticide exam, you're going to take the core exam, and what we're going over now is information from your core manual, and you're going to choose a specialty area. And for this course, we are studying the ornamentals and turf section, uh, and we are going to be a grounds applicator license. 026 uh, will be your first three license number, and then a dash, and then your number that they assign to you. Um, there is a two-day pesticide school offered by the North Carolina Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services. Uh, I recently took that myself. I first got my pesticide license back in 1997 after graduating uh, uh, with my, uh, well, with my second degree. I actually graduated uh, with a degree in landscape architecture, went and got my pesticide exam uh, that summer immediately after graduation. Took the two-day pesticide school then, passed it. Uh, flying colors, uh, if, I, if I don't mind uh, say a little bit. And then recently, uh, just this past winter, I went and took the, uh, the pesticide school again and retook the exam 21 years later just to see if there was any changes or anything new that came about. Again, uh, very good uh, pesticide school that I set through, and it was good to see the information that was on the exam. Uh, this past January, and so I'm bringing that information to you guys. So hopefully we finish this course, you guys are ready to go and sit and pass 
uh, both the core test and your specialty uh, area. Um, these certification exams, they are administered, uh, developed, administered, and graded by the Structural Pest Control and Pesticides Division of the North Carolina Department of Agricultural and Consumer Services, or NCDACS. Uh, and so, again, you know, we are following underneath that uh, structural law of 1955. And so it's all maintained by the Structural Pest Control and Pesticides Division. Um, it is uh, very wise to go ahead and order your exams. I mean, order your, uh, your textbooks uh, three weeks prior to going to sit uh, for the exam. That way you can go over the information, you know, start reading the chapters and, and answering the, uh, the, uh, the sample questions that are in the books. You'll need a number two pencil, a calculator, and a valid ID. Uh, you can pay at the door with a check or money order, no cash. And then your results will be available in uh, three to seven business days, or if you choose to have them mailed to you versus published online, it could take up to two weeks uh, to get that. And they'll ask you when you're at the exam site, do you want to uh, get them online in three to seven business days or one to two weeks? It took a little bit longer because this January we had a lot of snow and I took mine at the Green and Grow show that's uh, in Greensboro every January. So most of your ag agents were there all week as well. And so I didn't get my results back to a little bit later. Uh, I had some students uh, this past semester take it uh, and they got their results in, in, in about three to five days. So pretty, pretty quick, uh, they got their turnaround, their results um, back pretty soon. Um, but if you do choose to get a mail, it could take, you know, at least two weeks to get those back. Um, and unfortunately, you know, if you do um, not pass it your first time, you can take it two more times uh, within the same calendar year. So they're only going to let you take it uh, three times uh, per calendar year, but uh, um, you know they'll tell you the percentage rate on the uh, exams. It's about, I think it was 50% on the core pass it uh, the first time, and a little bit higher um, on the O and T side. So, uh, but you know, not bad. One out of two, um, you guys taking this course uh, guaranteed will be able to 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 pass it. Um, uh, you know the first time so you know what it does it takes studying it takes reading it takes doing the the practice questions that are in the book and then your you know homework assignments um, and and your test for this course um, private applicators um, are going to use or they're going to supervise the use of a restricted use pesticide uh, on an agricultural commodity and you might ask what is an agricultural commodity that can be any, any type of agricultural crop that's produced for sale, whether uh, you're producing seed or any type of other food. If you're, if you're raising it for an agricultural use, it's considered an agricultural commodity. And they can spray or apply these pesticides on their property or property that is rented, uh, rented by, uh, by their employer. So, you know, you may be working for a large uh, agricultural firm that, that has uh, tracts of land that are rented uh, and you can go and apply these restricted use pesticides on the on the rented property uh, if you're supervised uh, by someone who is certified or if you're certified yourself and usually private applicators are going to be your farmers your nursery operators Christmas tree growers and side producers now uh, my father holds both a commercial pesticide uh, applicators uh, certification and a private applicator certification. Um, you know, commercially he holds it because of the landscape business that we're still involved in. And then also he needed the, uh, the private applicators um, certification uh, to actually have the strawberry farm. Uh, there's, you know, there's only one time that we're going to need pesticides uh, in the strawberry form is that's when we first plant them and we had to fumigate the soil underneath the plastic culture. And so he has his private certification uh, to help take care of, um, take care of that when, uh, when we go in and uh, plant the strawberries. Uh, so the only time that's, that's uh, used is, uh, is mid-September. And then any other time there's no, there's no pesticides used at all uh, on our strawberry farm. Um, Private applicators, they're gonna take a 50 question uh, core test. It's gonna be multiple choice, 50 questions. It's gonna cost you 10 bucks. 
Uh, you'll have to sign a attestation form and what that is is saying that you do produce an agricultural commodity. So you'll sign that form saying whether you know you're you're a strawberry farmer, you're a Christmas tree grower, or whatever agricultural commodity that you're growing or producing, you'll have to sign a form stating that you do that. And you must be at least 16 years old. And the reason you know that you can get your private certification at 16 is because a lot of uh, farmers are using their um, you know their children on the farm or you know friends of their of their children and so they're allowed to go and get their certification um, you know just because of the I guess you know working on the family farm commercially you got to be 18 um, recertification for private applicators uh, you need to get four hours within a three-year period and those need to be gotten by September 30th of the third year um, and you need to have at least two hours in safety which has a cat um, um, category V or need to get two hours uh, in your specialized training X and usually when you go to you're gonna you're gonna get once you get licensed you're gonna be able to to get all these emails and uh, you know letters mailed to you hey we're offering four hours of pesticide training at such and such a location two hours will be in safety and two hours will be in uh, Christmas tree farming or two hours will be uh, certified for strawberry farming so you'll be able to get your four hours and and you know to get them to get four hours within three years guys that's that is that is unbelievable my opinion I think it needs to be more I think it probably needs to be four a year but I'm not gonna go down that road um, you know with irrigation being an irrigation contractor we got to have 10 hours a year being a landscape contractor we got to have seven CEUs a year now commercially I have to have 10 uh, CEUs but over a five-year period so look at the difference um, private applicators need four hours within three years commercial applicators need 10 hours within a five-year period so uh, but let's say you do not get your four hours of CEUs what can you do well you can pay the 10 bucks and go and uh, sit and take the uh, 50 question uh, exam again so and a lot of people do that they they may have trouble finding the 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 hours or they're not offered on the weekends they don't want to take time off during the week or they may not be able to get to the green and grow show each year so they may just go and take the exam and, and you don't have to go to the pesticide school to take the exam you can um, go and request just to take um, uh, your core exam over again and your specialty exam again if you if you don't get the needed CEUs within uh, your time frame um, you'll need to score 70 percent or more like the first time taking the uh, exam and then you'll need to pay another ten dollars um, uh, renewal application so uh, doesn't cost that much for the farmers to get private recertification it costs a little bit more um, uh, to get uh, your commercial um, applicators um, private applicators they may also uh, apply restricted use pesticides for a neighbor if trading services between two producers of agricultural commodities uh, and homeowners are not eligible to be certified as private applicators uh, if they want to use restricted use pesticides on their uh, on their properties so uh, that's a good thing um, you know the average homeowner does not need to have access to restricted use pesticides they don't have the training they don't have the certification uh, as you guys are, are um, you know on your way uh, to achieve so um, good point there um, now let's say a farmer doesn't have their um, their private certification and they have this major infestation or, or, or something happened to to their farm they can go and get an emergency certification permit it's one time only they won't be able to do it again they've they've, they've got to, they've got one chance at this uh, and it is at the discretion of the county extension um, pesticide coordinator they can purchase one restricted use pesticide for one application for a crop or site so it's either for a crop or a site not uh, not I got a field over here and I've got one two miles down the road it's the same issue no it's it's one permit for one site or one crop um, can be turned over needs to be turned over to the dealer 
uh, when the purchase is made, the certification permit. So it kind of gives the farmer, uh, you know, a chance to, to save his crop or her crop, but what they're going to want to do is, is help that farmer get their private uh, certification uh, uh, shortly after this uh, one-time emergency um, permit. Commercial applicators. All right, it's what I hold. Um, it is uh, uh, to use or supervise the use of any pesticide on someone's property for compensation. Now, go back and look at your private applicator's uh, definition. That's restricted use pesticide, right? This is for any pesticide. If you are to purchase and apply pesticide on someone's property and they pay you, you must have a commercial license. You must be commercially certified, certified, and then get your license. So it's a two-step process. Um, public operator does the same. Um, for their government job. Now, I just earlier mentioned, you know, the grounds crew here at the college, um, they don't have to pay the licensing fee. Uh, they will go and get certified. And a lot of times the, the college, I think, actually pays uh, for, uh, for the guys to go and get their certification, but they don't have to have a license because they're working um, for a government institution. Now, what if that individual who has the the certification goes and applies it to someone else's property for compensation, then they must apply uh, to get that license um, in addition to their certification. So big difference there, guys. Uh, exam fees, you're going to pay uh, 50 bucks for the core, and then you're going to pay 20 bucks for each uh, additional specialty. Um, and, and what that is, you know, guys, we're, we're going for ornamentals and turf. Um, you know, we're going for category L, and we'll talk a little bit about that uh, um, later on. But we are category L, ornamentals and turf. And so I think of it as, you know, we got ornamentals and we've got turf. So I'm thinking lawn and landscape, L. Our classification is L. So we will see the letter L in our license, on our license as well. Um, and so we're going for ornamentals and turf in this class. There's also like, um, you know, right away. Uh, aquatics, um, oh, kind of running a blank here, but it's listed in your, in, in your book. But just notice, just remember that we are going for the ornamentals and turf. And you can add additional categories um, uh, without taking the core again if it was taken after 2004. Now, remember I said I got my first pesticide license in 1997. Let's say I wanted to get an additional category. I took the core manual, I took the core exam, and then I took O&T exam and um, did that in 97. As long as I maintained my CEUs within my five-year period, I would never have to take the core again. Well, I'm also wanting to go for pesticide consultant. I've finally got enough years of experience and, and uh, the right degree that I'm looking to do uh, add that category to my uh, license. Now, uh, I would have had to take in the core again because they changed it and they changed it in 2004. So as long as I had to maintain my CEUs, I would have been fine keeping my uh, ornamentals and turf license, no problem. But once I went and got the additional category or an additional license, I would have had to take in the core manual again. So let's just say I wanted to add right away. We're going to start doing some work for um, you know, Duke Energy, spraying uh, underneath power lines, and I had to have the right away license. I would have had to have gotten uh, or taken the core exam again and, uh, and passed it with a 70% or above. Uh, but as long as I've kept my ONT, I could have done my CEUs and been fine. Um, NCDA CS will send a license application to people who pass both exams. Now, when I took my exam, they give me a, a candidate number, took the test, wrote it on there, and then they uh, sent out an email to everybody that was there, hey, results are up, or you could keep checking on the uh, on the website, and I was, I was checking every day. And what it is, it's like this huge PDF that you open up and you scroll through and you find your numbers and it'll say, you know, passed or, or, or failed. And once you pass both um, your core and your specialty exam, um, NCDA will uh, mail you a license application, which will cost another $75. So, you know, you gotta pay 50 bucks for the core, 20 for your specialty, that's 70 and then now 75 bucks to get your license. Now, you can be certified and not licensed. 
but if you are licensed, you have to be certified. So just know the difference there. Um, and then the license fee is not required for the public operator. So um, they're not having to pay that $75 uh, if you're working for a government institution. They do sign a form, um, you know, the same type of licensing form. They're just not having to pay the 75 bucks if they're using uh, their certification and license um, as an employee of a government institution. Recertification. Now, I have to get um, um, 10 CEUs uh, within a five-year period uh, that expires um, on June 30th of the fifth year. Now, that's when my certification period ends. It's June 30th of your fifth year. So once over, if you've had that pesticide license for five years now and it's coming up on June 30th, you better hope you have your 10 CEUs. Now, the only difference is you can't get all 10 hours in one year. You at least to have them, you have to have them spread over at least two years. So you could get nine and then wait, you know, you should have gotten one prior. If you're expiring this June 30th and you have zero hours, you're going to have to take the test again. But if you've gotten at least one hour last year or the previous year and still need nine, you could get all nine before uh, June 30th of this year. Um, your license will expire December 31st. So um, make sure you, you know that. They're going to send you a thing in the mail. Hey, you need to renew your license by December 31st. You can log in, pay it online with a, with a credit card, no problem. Uh, and the, your, the form that they send you out early December will also tell you how many CEUs that you've gotten throughout the year. And so when you do go to training, they're going to scan your license card. It's going to get updated. Uh, and they keep track of that um, uh, pretty good for you. So as um, long as you're going somewhere once a year, guys, you're at least going to get, you know, one or two hours uh, at, at any type of meeting or convention that you go to. Uh, but let's say, again, you don't make the 10 hours within five years, you can uh, pay for it and then take the core and your specialty exam again. And again, I know a lot of people that just say, you know, no way, I'm taking time off work to go and uh, do my CEUs, I'll just go and sit and take uh, the core and specialty exam once every five years. So my dad let his lapse uh, and he went and took it and it'd probably been 40 years, uh, you know, since the last time he took uh, the, uh, uh, took the test. So, I mean, it, it was easy for him. He didn't do the two day pesticide school, but I mean, you're around it every single day and, and uh, you know, made a career out of it. Research, you know, again, I already talked about that. You know, you got to have it within a five-year period. Um, they send you annual reports, and then there is a link on their website underneath credit status search, and that'll tell you how many CEUs that you've gotten uh, within your cert recertification period. Um, what if you have two or more categories? So let's say I have ornamentals and turf, and I have right-of-way. Um, you need to get the total number of CEUs with the highest requirement. So uh, I've got an example here of ONT and aquatics. So let's look at that. Ornamentals and turf require 10 hours uh, and aquatics requires six. So I must take the 10 for the ornamentals and turf, but I would only need to take uh, three hours within aquatics. So um, you'd have to get those three hours in each additional category. And aquatics has six, but you only needed to get three. So, but the, whichever one has the highest, you would have to go and make sure you at least get all of those uh, CEUs within your certification period. Uh, a license is an official or legal document that gives permission to apply or supervise the application of any pesticide with the um, content of an applicator's business for employment. Um, the pesticide law of 71 does not require a business license, but each office must have a licensed pesticide applicator on staff. So let's say you start your own business, you have an office in Winston, one in Greensboro, one in Raleigh. Each branch office would have to have a licensed um, pesticide applicator on staff. That way they can supervise uh, the use of restricted use pesticides that you're probably going to use in the lawn care or landscape industry. Um, trying to think. Um, now, when it does talk about supervision of someone, you, you must be 
If you're supervising someone's uh, applying a restricted use pesticide, you must be available by phone call, uh, you know, immediately and be able to come to the job site because both you and your applicator that you're supervising uh, are going to be held accountable for it. And what what I've seen a lot in the past is is guys, the person that you're supervising has to be in the same office. You can't be your buddy's supervisor who has his own landscape business because if he gets pulled by the pesticide applicator, when, and that will happen, there are pesticide, um, uh, the pesticide police that, that you will see out there. I've been pulled a couple times, super nice people. You just gotta have your stuff together. Um, you know, I was pulled one time and the only thing I had in the dump truck was, um, we had some hand pruners, rakes, uh, some, some blue tarps, and, and a backpack blower because we were hand pruning a, a large uh, residential property, um, you know, huge, huge, I mean, it was, you know, three or four acre site, but the homeowners wanted everything hand pruned. So it took me about three days to do it with, with three other guys. And we were sitting there eating lunch on the job site and then there comes a pesticide inspector. He pulled up, I knew him, great guy, you know, friend of my dad uh, for years. Um, he's like, hey Eric, Hey, I just got to do a report on you. I'm like, that's fine. Yeah. He's like, do you have any pesticide? I'm like, no, nah, I don't even have a Roundup in the truck. But he still had to do the forms and stuff and fill it out. But let's say I wasn't licensed and I had pesticides in the truck. Well, who are you spraying for? If I wasn't licensed myself, I was working for my parents' company. If my dad had the pesticide license, I'm A-OK. -okay. But let's say it was my uncle who also has his own landscape business, two, so, two totally separate entities. I couldn't have said that I was working for my uncle because I'm not, I'm not working for him. So he couldn't supervise me uh, applying the, uh, the restricted use pesticides. So anyway, um, all licensed guys expire on December 31st. Uh, renewal fee is $75 and you must be 18 years of old uh, to apply for a commercial applicator's license. There are five licensing categories. You have the commercial applicator, which is what we're uh, striving to be because we're taking ornamentals and turf and we're wanting to um, you know, be in the landscape business. We're wanting to charge people for our services. Public operator. Now, the public operator um, can also be certified on ornamentals and turf they uh, just don't have to, to pay the licensing fee if they're working for a government institution. But let's say you're a subcontractor uh, or you know, one of these, um, you know, we all see the guys that go and cut the trees underneath the power lines, and I know I keep going back to that. You know, they're considered public operators too, but they're doing it for a fee. They're subcontractors for like Duke Energy, so they would have to have the public operator license and then their category that they're doing. Um, or their, their license type, you know, ornamentals and turf or whatever. Um, your pesticide dealer, again, those are the ones that sell the restricted use pesticides and actually house, house them on site. An aerial applicator uh, is someone that's applying pesticides through, uh, you know, an aircraft, whether it be helicopter uh, or, you know, airplane. Usually they're gonna do it with the, with the airplanes. Uh, maybe only seen a helicopter once, uh, but you'll, you'll see, uh, you know, out west especially, uh, you know, applying pesticides to, to large acreage farms. And then the pest, uh, pest control consultant, um, you know, someone that's hired just for advice. You know, a pest control consultant can apply pesticides for a fee, but then they would have to have the commercial uh, applicator uh, license as well. So those are your five licensing categories. Uh, reciprocal license, you know, if you have valid certification from Virginia, South Carolina, Georgia, or Florida, you could get a reciprocal license here in North Carolina. It's a $75 fee. Uh, you can get your continuing education from your home state. That's okay as long as you get your, uh, you know, your minimums there. You must not be a resident of North Carolina. Once you move to North Carolina or you open up a branch office in North Carolina, someone here is going to have to have the pesticide license. And then um, aerial license uh, reciprocation is only good from Georgia, South Carolina, Virginia, and Mississippi uh, when there is a you know national emergency declared. So a um, little bit harder to get that aerial pesticide license. I wouldn't want to do it for nothing. Uh, uh, you know, just a lot of response. You know, it's a lot of responsibility being a ground applicator. Just imagine uh, what it is if you're doing aerial applications. 
And this will conclude it. Again, this comes from your North Carolina Pesticide Applicator Certification Core Manual. I um, hope this was some good information, guys, and I will see you in the next lecture. Thanks. Bye-bye.